Hi, in this video, we will see how to load test or performance test your machine learning models. This is a very important step in the machine learning deployment process as it's, it's important to know whether the deployed model will meet your business SLA. When I say SLA, it's a service level agreement and we need to make sure that our model is performing as expected. And when we talk about performance here, this is typically not the model performance metric. It is the runtime performance of the model. Now let's give some example. Let me give some example. Now, typically, if you take if you are developing a model for an a personalized advertisement, so whenever a user logs into a website, you want to display a ad which is very personalized based on his historical uh, behavior. Now, when a user logs into a page, basically his attention span in that page may be few seconds. Maybe you'll click on some other link and move uh, to a different page altogether. Now, if you are not able to service the ad within a few milliseconds, as soon as the page loads, then that means you lost that customer. The ad impression that you have made is actually like not visible to the customer at all. That is one scenario. The second scenario take about credit card fraud detection. If a customer goes into a shop and swipes a credit card, you basically run a model on the back end to detect whether a transaction is fraud or not. And the customer does not wait endlessly over that. There is a time frame by which your intermediate uh, platform, the card processing platform, may kind of disconnect and auto approve the transaction. So you might have a few milliseconds, say like 100 milliseconds or even less than that, to really say, uh, really run your model and check whether that particular transaction is fraud and then respond back. If you don't do it, the transaction is auto approved and there may be possibility that particular transaction may be a fraud as well. So basically in this case, even though you have a model, the model is performing well in the training data, in the validation data, in the test data, but even though it's deployed as well, but it's not really meeting your business uh, process SLA. And that's the main challenge. So in this video, we'll see how we can uh, do like uh, load testing and performance testing. What are the characteristics of it? In the next video, I will do a hands-on demo of it. But in this, I'm going to more explain the concepts. So uh, this is a simple architecture of model deployment. When you talk about model deployment, your model can be deployed in multiple way. Your model can be deployed in batch where basically the model runs every night against the data and then gives an output. In that cases, uh, where you are running, in that case where your model is running in batch, basically you have a time frame of window to execute your model while the individual SLA is also required. But even there is some spikes for some uh, thousand record or 2000 record or the overall uh, runtime will actually normalize it. So you need to make sure your model is running within two hours or three hours, depending on your business SLA. But the real challenge comes in when your model is deployed for real-time prediction. The real-time prediction can be using a streaming platform where you have an event-driven architecture where a message is sent through a uh, message bus or even to a streaming platform. And then you take the, day, take the particular data and then you execute and send the response back. Or it can be deployed as a REST endpoint where you are just uh, deploying the model as a flash service or some other uh, service. Now, when you deploy a model, it's not only the model alone. There are multiple moving parts. The first is like you may have a data collection step. And typically when you are running in production, the data collection will just be an uh, incoming record that is coming in as a request to you. Or you may also maybe have to go to some other sources and correlate the data, right? Then you prepare your data. The preparation can be basically you kind of do null handling or you do kind of normalization of data. There can be multiple preparation steps. There can be feature engineering step where you create a lot of features out of the incoming data and in that case you may have to go through and look uh, look your uh, traditional enterprise data warehouse or your NoSQL platform in memory system depending on your SLA so the, the and you do your feature engineering and finally what you do is you load your model and create a serving interface that will send the data to the model get the score and then pass it back to the end user so there are multiple hops that happens when you deploy a model so when we talk about deploying a model it's not only the final model alone it is the entire process that went through in your training uh, infrastructure now 
the very first thing is when you're deploying model, you need to understand your business SLA. I gave two examples. One is the targeted uh, had, and second is fraud deduction, right? Credit card fraud deduction. Both of this might have some strict SLA. So you need to understand your SLA. And there are some parameters that you will have, right? You will have the average response time you need to respond back uh, to the customer in case of credit card fraud detection. It can be, uh, depending on your SLA, it can be, say, like 100 milliseconds right you want by 100 milliseconds you want to respond back to the customer and uh, you also need to make sure like what is the average time you can respond and what is the max time the reason is if you are not responding with 100 millisecond you need to make sure that maybe you cut down the model and run some quick rules in parallel and send it across so maybe you can keep if your maximum time is 100 millisecond you can keep like wait for your model for 60 70 millisecond if it does not respond you run some other rules and then quickly send out the response so at least you have some kind of approach to combat fraud right so that is that is what you need to understand what is your max response time based on your business sla how many transactions you are handling per second and peak and non-peak sometimes in the non-peak uh, when i say like during weekends you may have more credit card transaction during the rather than during the weekdays so you need to understand what is the maximum volume you need to handle in some cases you may be handling thousand transactions per second in some cases you may be handling even five thousand transactions and ten thousand transactions per second now your transaction per second determines your infrastructure need when i say determines your infrastructure need you you as your number of transactions go you can you have to basically scale out your deployment into multiple environment it can be like uh, a kubernetes based environment or you can have a bare metal server running multiple instances of your flask app or it can be serverless it can be anything but you need to account for your infrastructure your infrastructure cost will really vary based on how much transactions you need to handle and depending on the model type and other parameters as well and finally availability how much time you want to respond on time you can have a system which is 100% available. So in this case, all the transaction that comes in has to be scored. You cannot miss any transaction. But sometimes you may say, okay, I am fine if I score like 90% of the time. Take in the case of the had uh, targeting, right? Uh, maybe I score 90% of the time and in 10% I show random ads. Uh, even if something goes wrong that is also possible or you can say i want to have like uh, four nines or five nines when i say four nines or five nines typically it's four nines is 99.99 percent availability five nines is 99.999 availability similarly like that so you need to define the availability requirement the more the availability you have the cost of infrastructure will exponentially rise so typically say up to 80 percent i may get a good sla but any number you want to go above 80%, you may have to bake in a huge cost in your infrastructure. So you need to balance between the cost you can afford, the cost your business process can afford, and as well as the availability of the system. So these are some NFRs that you need to get before even, uh, but no before even like deploying a model, right? Now you have your uh, model in place, you are deployed. How do you load test and make sure your model meets the non-functional requirement that we defined here? When I say NFI, it's non-functional requirement. Uh, basically, how does it meet the requirement? That's why we start our load testing or performance testing process. So in, the, in this case, what we do is we simulate users. We simulate parallel users. Right now, it can be user based or it can be transaction based. In typically machine learning model, um, it is it is mostly like it will be users and transaction might be same in most of the cases. So when 100 users are swiping the credit card, you may have 100 transactions per second at the same point in time I'm talking about. So how many transactions per second you want to simulate the user? But when you take a web page. Uh, maybe one user is logged in and he is, he is clicking on uh, 10 different pages, right? So in that case, your user and transaction might be different, uh, might be different, right? But in this case, let's assume the user and transaction are same. So what we do is we run across this particular model with multiple transactions per second. It can be, we start with one transaction per second, then we go to five transaction, 50 transaction, 100 transaction, and 500 transactions per second, right? We keep on pumping data in parallel to the interface and we calculate some kind of metrics, right? I'll show you what metrics are, but let's first understand uh, what are the typical bottleneck that we will have in a uh, particular system, right? Now you can have a network bottleneck 
the network bottleneck can be from the user connecting to your service the there may be some network latency that can be because of how your systems are deployed in multiple data center or it can be naturally you don't have better bandwidth to service it there can be memory spikes so when you are when you are executing one record you may not see the spike but when you are getting 1000 transactions together at one stage your memory will spike you are cpus will spike the cpus are very important because when you are deploying a model you need to see you are not cpu start and some models may require gpu you need to make sure that you have the right hardware in place right so you have you can have memory spikes you can have uh, your your model is also very memory intensive so you can you have to load your model in memory so that every every time it's available for user to serve and in some cases you may have multiple model loaded into memory you need to make sure you have sufficient memory for the loaded model as well as your transient data part of your application right the if you are deploying a model using java then you may have garbage collection as well and garbage collection as well as cpu intensive as well right you may have shared resources you may not have a dedicated infrastructure there may be other process running or there may be os process running also windows has its own set of process so you need to account for all that you can if you if you have a two cpu system or 10 8 cpu system you need to make sure your one or one cpu is always allocated uh, to cpu to your os resources so you must not account everything right so the shared resources might be there there may be cpu starvation as i said there may be background process or demons running or multiple other applications running so you need to account for all this factor when you are deploying a model and these are the bottleneck you need to look for right now what do you measure right now i said like you are passing in multiple user transactions per second and everything now what are we measuring over here finally is what is the minimum response time what is the maximum response time and what is the average response time we want all three because we need to bucket it and understand uh more typically say like your 40% of the transaction might uh, go through minimum response time and once you have lot of load it may go through maximum response time and then you have average response time so what you do against each of this user transactions per second you measure these three parameter min max and average then you calculate the response time in percentile bucket so now your availability say you want 80% 90% or 95% you also need to know okay what is my 95 percentile time how much of my 95% of the transaction how much time it, it takes minimum maximum and average right above 95 when you go to 96 it can actually be even worse so uh, that's why you need to think about scaling your system and everything so you need to capture for each of this what is your percentile bucket right you also need to a log and understand like how much time it takes in data collection how much time it takes in data preparation how much times it takes in feature engineering uh, when you are doing a look up on your database how much time it takes the the reason is if you are identify the bottleneck then you know where to tune your uh, deployment process better right now say like you are feature engineering take lot of time maybe you need to allocate more memory or you are using a no sql uh, system which is good but you want to put it completely into memory so that the data is available right or you are not using a in memory or no sql directly looking up into your rdbms or data store you need to make sure that you need to maybe move into a no sql or in memory system which is which does very fast look up so you need to understand your bottleneck uh, per, your your performance bottleneck area as well right so that is the point and next is like what is your memory and cpu utilization at the time when you are running for all these different transactions when you are running for one transaction your cpu and memory might be less and typically say if you are using geo unicorn with multiple workers each worker will use its memory space so you need to account for those kind of uh, memory requirement as well depending on how you are deploying it right and as you go higher tps like 50 100 maybe your cpu is heavily utilized so you need to make sure that your cpu utilization is well within the limit you don't want to go up to 90% or 100% utilization you want to keep it around like maybe 60 to 70% depending on the need so that worst case you can keep from buffer as well right so that is thing and also you need to measure network latency uh, which part whether the database is causing network latency or whether the incoming request is causing network latency you can do wire shock analysis or other analysis on the network as well right so uh, these things are something which you monitor like uh, what i'm talking about is completely theoretical i understand i'm going to have a detailed uh, demo on this as well how you can uh, measure your uh, 
performance and end to end sla by simulating users in my next video but i want to set the ground so that we understand it's a very critical step even if you have a best model deployed if the model is not serving the sla requirement then uh, basically the model is of no use it's not generating any value for you so uh, this is something like which we have to do once the model is deployed right now some of the best practices for you to know where the bottleneck is the bottleneck can happen after the testing as well say your model is deployed you did your load test performance test and everything is fine it can happen after even after the model is deployed as well and that's where you need to basically uh, track the end to end performance so once a request comes in you be, maybe have a individual request identifier that you ask the client to send and you track it across all your system you log the individual system performance and see logging is not a overhead it's very necessary you can have asynchronous logging as well done so people think lot of logging you need to have the right level of log you need to have the info log debug log when you are going to production maybe disable the info or disable the debug depending on your requirement but have some logging which will give you information of what transaction came in how long it took how long it took across the system right just one line just collect together and print one or couple of lines you don't have to have hundred of lines per each module so you need to centralize your logging as well right uh, you need to have detailed debug log if you're debugging uh, sometimes like everything will be fine when you go into production it may fail enable debug logs so that you can go into detail on where the bottleneck is happening you need to make sure you consolidate all these logs across system and uh, send it to some system where you can do analysis it can be done by manually or you can use uh, tools like splunk or elastic search and uh, log stack kibana elk stack uh, to monitor and you can show graphs and dashboards Uh, continuously on how your model is performing this is apart from your other uh, dashboards for model drift analysis and uh, data drift analysis and everything this is just to show your operational performance of the model not really like an uh, uh, not really like a model performance or data performance it is purely from the operational aspect of it time so these are all like pretty important and one final thing is you also need to if your model is very sensitive to timeline you need to understand like you need to start with a simple model that can achieve this performance especially if you don't have gpus or something like that. if you are looking at cpu and say you build a neural network model which gives you a very good performance but it's of no use because uh, you 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 if you are not able to meet your sla so create models according to the device you will have in the deployment environment think about it during the model training process itself uh keep the model simple according to your need if you are say like 5 uh, seconds sla and your uh, neural network model takes like 2 seconds then it's fine go for neural network but if you want millisecond performance and neural network does not work uh, because it's cpu you need like do, uh, do lot of parallel computation matrix multiplication and everything keep your try to keep your model simple even if it takes some part of your model matrix performance itself so that's about it in this video we will catch in the next video where i will walk through a simple way of load testing your model thank you very much